Hey, 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 welcome everybody. My name is John Kovach, president of Amplified Minds and founder of the Champion Circle. I'm excited to talk today with you and I get a little giggly because uh, I'm going to walk you through some steps in the way that I think um, people should evaluate their network and their connections with and uh, I'm excited to do so because I'm going to draw for you today. <laughs> and I just made a few drawings to prep it and uh, you get to see why they don't ask me to show up at art functions or drawing functions. Though I love art, though I love drawing, though I love that expression, I am very, very gifted at <laughs> the expression of <laughs> stick figures. I would have been a great Neanderthal or an awesome uh, ancient civilization who was tasked to do petroglyphs or drawings on rocks and walls to uh, uh, tell the story of our people because, man, I would have nailed, nailed the uh, the actual drawing part, the stick figures of animals and beasts and gods and so forth. So there you go. Um, this is exciting. This is an exciting day for me. I just, I just love what's going on in the world. I love what's going on right now. And by world, I mean just things around me. I'm loving watching progression. I'm loving reading articles and seeing how people are coping. I'm watching the world adjust, and that is a fun, fun thing to do. Um, I'm watching how entrepreneurs are taking advantage of this time to grow and build and adjust their business. I'm watching how individuals and families are are resorting back to the way that things used to be, where families were stronger and they were fighting against you know separation from anxieties and from depressions as well as from technologies. And I'm also learning a lot about how you know, leaders in, 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 in our communities and in our space are taking action and rallying behind the able-bodied, able-minded people who are willing to serve and to contribute. And it's going really, really well in a lot of areas. So I like to sit back and just say, congratulations, world. Great job. You're doing awesome. Like what a, what a cool thing to watch. And uh, all amidst some crazy times, right? All amidst some really wild stuff going on. And so I think that that's a valuable piece and we don't want to misunderstand the good that's going on in the world. Um, I've been coming on here a lot and saying, you need to do this. You need to do that. Adjust, adjust, adjust. Jobs are available. Uh, opportunities are available and so forth. And as I have come on and I have said these things, I also want to swallow my tongue and say, we are doing so well right now. The world is in a bad place and it does need to let mother nature kick in and uh, do its thing and take its course. But uh, at the same time, people are resilient. I'm just blown away with how cool people are. And because people are cool, I wanted to teach today on a subject and on a matter that I think is uh, extremely, extremely uh, important. And I want to bring up my ticker here. And if you're jumping in and want to say hello, just drop a, com a comment in the comment section. I'd love to see you here because I want to really ultimately add to your discussions and answer your questions. Um, this is a great opportunity. Uh, of course, first of all, a uh, shout out to two people here. Matt Gibbons jump in says, certainly a lot of great things happening in our amazing world. Yeah, absolutely. Matt, that's a that's an amazing comment. And Chip Eiley in the house, he says, what's up, everybody? So this is good. This is exciting. I'm excited to jump into this. By the way, um, just a side note, this is a fascinating time because uh, – uh, and then Carmen, Carmen Riviera, she, she's here too. Carmen, nice to see you again. Thanks for joining on our live. Um, this is an interesting time uh, in the profession of public speaking because public speakers can no longer – speak on a stage and there's got to there's got to be some creativity i have been thinking up the wazoo like ideas upon ideas on how to speak from a stage and the only thing i can come up with right now is creating my own stages and jumping on other people's stages which is the same game we used to do when we couldn't when we could speak on physical stages but I'm talking about like finding an actual podium, finding an actual stage, putting myself in a small circle, TED Talk style, 
filming it and putting it out there or going live and doing so as well. And those are some really interesting things, but obviously you need resources, you need timing, you need dedication and stuff like that. But it's just been interesting. And I've been thinking about the various, uh, the various things that speakers could be doing right now to help to, to grow, to maintain their businesses and to maintain their status. So let's take like two minutes here and let me just share with you some of the thoughts that I've had for public speakers. Uh, and this also relates to coaches. This relates to people who are in presentations and sales. Okay. So just remember that this is a concept that I've been just dabbling in my brain with, and it's kind of an interesting, an interesting one. If you're not a public speaker, but you love to speak, you love to present, you love to um, sponsor events. You love to be in the eye of the people. This is a, this is for you. This is listen up. So we're going to take two minutes. And I'm just going to share some of the ideas. When you are in a position that you need to pivot, P I V O T. Okay. Pivot. I'm living in Utah. I'm not originally from Utah, but sometimes we call them mountains. They're called mountains. M A O U N T A N A A. N-T-A-I-N-S. Let me repeat that. M-O-U-N-T-A-I-N-S. Mountains. Mountains. Okay. But we say mountains here in Utah. So uh, I'm getting used to no T's, but uh, two minutes here. Ready? Go. So when you're in a position of needing to pivot, especially in a presentation phase, you've got to come up with alternatives to how you make money, how you sell, but how you add value, still pushing, producing, and providing the message and the goodness that you offer right? So first one is consider, this is principle number one, first consider an affiliate marketing position where you can work alongside a brand who is succeeding during COVID-19 or during quarantine, who is doing well, that you relate with, that you resent with, that you feel good about, and that you can share with audiences who you've already built up and who you can. That's an important piece because as you already have an audience, as you already have a following, it's important to reach out to those people based on products and services that you are supportive of, that you are passionate about, and to align yourself with all of that. So that's just tip number one. Number two, consider the retail game. Okay, the retail game is something that I've been looking into. I'm on the phone um, week in, week out with some people about creating uh, opportunities to sell product, right? And product might be swag. It might be books. It might be helpful things and tips and tools and resources that people could be using or could need right now at this time. Okay. And obviously we're developing a marketing message behind all these that attracts and helps these people. Right. But I'm talking about just like alternatives. Okay. That's number two is consider the retail game. Okay. And that could be e-commerce retail, could be online retail, could be in-person retail, could be sold out of my garage, drive by, pick up, hand sanitize and get out of here. Okay. Whatever. But there are opportunities in that that are working. Um, and then the th the third option that I have come up with is, is creating virtual spaces to connect. And that's been my game this entire uh, nine weeks that I've been in quarantine. I'm, I'm in my office, you guys. I've, I've been back and forth, but you know what I'm saying. Um, but uh, creating digital platforms for people. And that doesn't mean you have to be a programmer. It doesn't mean you have to be awesome at any one skill. But all you got, all you need is a camera or a microphone, and you got to invite your audience or the people around you to engage with it and allow them the opportunity, allow them the prop, the proper platform to share, to grow, to connect. Okay, and that's where I've been playing this game, and I found it very, very profitable for me. But I've been interested in dabbling in some of the other areas. So there's my there's my three ideas. Okay, so um, there you go. <laughs> uh, Whatever it's worth, I'm curious about your ideas. What ideas are you coming up with? And please throw them into the chat section while I identify a few people here who are watching and contributing. So appreciate you. But let me know what some of your ideas have been. What have you been doing to adjust? What have you been doing to to um, to to take on change? Right. What are some of the things that you are doing to to uh, I'm going to say step side step to vertical step? A lot of us are trying to grow vertical by taking a step back. And while I think that that's okay, if I'm climbing a mountain, there's no way in heck I'm going to take a step back because it took a lot of energy to take that step forward. So I'm either going to sidestep or vertically step 
in order to progress. So what are you doing to vertically progress in your business? I want to reach out to some of you guys. Uh, Mr. Kovach says, Matt Gibbons, hey, brother, what up? And uh, super excited for some things coming up with Matt. There's some cool things in the works. It's going to be awesome. Jason Curtis in the house. What's up, John? And Amplified Minds. Thanks for that shout out, by the way. Thanks for the shout out to Amplified Minds. I, I appreciate that. Um, I have easily and quickly become the brand and the face of Amplified Minds. Um, but I appreciate people who mention it because it's just when you associate that term – in my mind or in most minds who know us, they think of a business. But for newbies, for people who have never heard of us, uh, when they associate with Amplified Minds, it's like, who are the Amplified Minds? Are we, or is that us? Is that you? And the answer is yes. The answer is always yes. So thank you. Um, Chip says, that is working well for me. Great advice. Awesome. I, I love hearing that. I love that it's working for you. Uh, which of the three? I'm assuming that came in earlier. So it was probably the first option, right? So a uh, retail option. I'm curious, Chip, if you're in the retail game. Hmm, I should talk to Chip. That's a really, really good idea. But the affiliate programs are working for me as well um, as far as building relationships and, and leveraging audiences and providing services and products and resources that are helpful to my audience that I res that I resonate with, right? It's all going well. Matt Gibbons says affiliate, affiliate programs rock. Some have residual income. I, I love that. I love that. And uh, I typically only go with the ones that have a residual income factor. But sometimes, sometimes we just need to get paid. And sometimes we just need to find out, uh, uh, find a way, right? And and because of that, you know, avoiding, avoiding, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, avoiding desperation, but focusing on value and service. That's a really, really great way to connect. So I love that. I love that. Okay. Uh, comments are piling in, but I want to get to our conversation today, which is really, really going to be fun. I was actually giggling to myself before this that uh, uh, we were talking about. And then if I have some minutes, because if I want to hurry this up, um, I can bring some of you on the screen and we can chat. Okay. We can talk about some of this. Jason says, love sponsoring events and being in the e-commerce industry. Yeah. And Jason's an awesome advocate for that. He's really good at that. Taylor Douglas is shouting out to Chip. Chip owns a restaurant. Uh, yeah. Chip is awesome. And, uh, you know, it's funny because I'd love to hear from Chip maybe what he's doing to uh, uh, maintain that restaurant status, to maintain income, to help people and help the community. That'd be a really cool thing to hear and see from. So, Chip, if you have a moment, write in the comment section. Just tell us what you're doing. That's awesome. Chip, so we started our sales service training and helping others with retreats on our sales, on our stage sales. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. The consulting piece of that is really, really extremely important because a lot of people – need to adjust. Now, there are going to be so many more Zoom calls and webinars than we ever expected. I could barely get any work done yesterday because I was on Zoom call after Zoom call after Zoom call. And I was just like, man, I feel exhausted and I feel like I've gotten work done, but I've got a little task list here that I haven't even touched. And I was like, wow, Zoom is taking over. <laughs> so if you haven't bought stocks in Zoom, it's not over. When we get back into like normal life, Zoom will still be prominent. It will still be good. They're supporting educators too, by the way, amongst other things she adds. So thanks, Taylor, by the way, shout out. By the way, you guys, um, reach out to Taylor Douglas right now. She's involved in running a, um, a challenge, excuse me, a challenge called the 100 Conversations Challenge. Actually, I just printed out my, my tool book here. Okay, here's my tool book recording. Uh, 100 conversations in, in, in 10 days. So I'm, I'm really excited to do this. And that's from Taylor. Taylor, I'm really excited to do this. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be jumping into that here in a moment. But I appreciate you. If you guys want to reach out and find out more about her 100 conversations challenge, reach out to Taylor Douglas. Okay, two more comments. And I'm jumping into this. I'm so excited. Chip says, we had to move to doing phone enrollments. Cool. That's awesome. Uh, that's And I know that you guys did some training on that. And uh, I participated in some of the phone enrollment training and I'm practicing my phone enrollment training. And it's a, it's a, it's an awesome, awesome skill to have. Um, I just ordered a book. Uh, um, Bob Berg, the man, the myth, the legend, where is it? Where is it? The author of this book, Bob Berg, when I interviewed him and chatted with him at the, uh, uh, Global Virtual Summit for Habitude Warrior. He mentioned a book that uh, was his all-time favorite book of all time and sales book that he just thinks is the greatest of all time. And I ordered it. 
And uh, anyways, if you want to know what that book is, I'll show it to you when it arrives. But there is no publisher. There's one person who committed to printing the book. It's from a manuscript um, and, and uh, a gentleman by the name of Harry Brown uh, is, is, is the one who has rights to those documents. And anyways, um, when you order the book, they have to print you a special copy so that, uh, uh, you can receive a paperback version. And so I'm excited to get mine. I don't know how long it'll take, but when it gets here, I'll, I'll disclose that. But if you remember what that book was, it was Bob Berg's all time favorite book and his favorite book, um, in his personal library. Oh my gosh. The, uh, comments are rolling in. Why does, why don't we just keep to these for a minute? Residual income is where it's at. Zoom is the way to go now. Awesome. Matt Gibbons. Oh, to be a Zoom affiliate and have a huge group use my link. I know. How, and I know. And I think that Zoom like was good enough to like not create an affiliate program or or whatever because they they definitely like I don't know. I I think they missed out. But then again, I think they wanted to maintain and go public, so they took away their profit shares and opened up profit share to investors. So I, I think that was their play. But dang, dude, that would be <laughs> – yeah. Matt and I think on a, on a very um, strategic scaled level, and uh, I love the way it was stuff he says. He says love the go-giver. Okay, there's enough of my comments. Okay, today's topic, you guys, is we're going to be talking about the true – value of connecting and networking. Now I want to show you kind of like a mind map of the true value of connecting and networking. Have you ever calculated your connections? Have you ever calculated the cost, the liabilities, the resources, and the effects of your connections and your network? Now, I don't suppose that everyone has, which is why I think this is a fun topic to talk about. But I also don't think that many people think too hard about the the time spent and, and the value of time spent, right? Uh, if you've ever heard the term time is money and money is time, um, I'm slightly referring to that. But what I want to get to the point of is that yes, time is money and yes, money is time. Money can buy you time, but it can't buy you more time. There's only 24 hours. Money cannot buy you more time and time cannot buy you more money. But what can is measuring your str your strategy and knowing exactly where you're headed. Okay, so I want to talk about that from the engagement of a one-on-one -on -one conversation, whether that be in person or on social or in an email or whatever. Okay, the exchange. Let me show you the value of that connection and why it's important to have calls to action invitations or something progressive that moves you to the next step because the second you end a conversation the value has gone down and sometimes the value of our connections are in the negatives because we do not invest in the resources and time and functionalities that go into those actual relationships okay i'm just spitting out a bunch of jargon i, I really want to jump into this so um i'm getting a little technical here so let me prep my screen here. Oh, this is going to be exciting. Okay. Uh, I need to figure out how to do this first. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to bring on to the screen. Boom. <laughs> okay. Are you excited for this? Because I am pumped. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So here we go. I'm going to move this over. All right. So uh, this is how I draw stick figures. At the beginning of this call, I did share with you guys that I could be one of the best artists of the Neanderthal, the Neanderthal tribes or uh, the ancient civilizations who were commissioned to uh, uh, go out and to build petroglyphs on walls and rocks to describe the stories and the, and the, uh, the history of their people. This is the type of stuff that I would have drawn. Um, I do not make my stick figures masculine or feminine. I just flip their bodies. So everything is built on a circle, four sticks, which are their arms and legs, and then a triangle, which is their body. I typically draw their bodies either upward or downward. So it doesn't matter. This is neither man or female uh, or um, shout out to my LGBTQ community. There is no gender represented in this transaction. All that this is – is a human to a human. Are you ready for this? Okay, I'm just excited. <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk about this human to human connection, okay? From one person to another. Person A reaches out to person B. 
this is what I call an exchange. There is an exchange in this that is associated with money, right? This exchange is time. All right. This ex I'm going to fix my eye there. This exchange is time. This exchange is money. Oh, look at this. I'm, I'm clicking. So if you hear the clicking, yeah, there you go. Time and money. All right. What other, what, uh, I'm asking you guys. Okay. Not a bad drawing. Thanks, Carmen. <laughs> and I got people just laughing. Uh, tell me what other exchanges, what other costs come from this exchange? If I'm this person, okay, you look at my, you're looking at my little thing here. If I am this person, I'm just going to say John, right? If this is John, what is the cost of this exchange? When I reach out to, uh, let's see, let's pick somebody out here. Um, let's say I reach out to Matt, all right, only because it was a short name. Not because Matt's any other – Matt, you are special, but just because your your name is shorter. Okay, there you go. I should have done with Chip. Matt or Chip. All right, Chip, I'll do you next. Okay. Um, what is the exchange of this – or sorry, what is the cost of this exchange? Some of you are saying value. Awesome. I love it. Value. And we can measure that here in a minute. I love that. Somebody said knowledge. I love that. And with knowledge, let's talk about intellect, right? Let's talk about conversation. Let's talk about um, emotional intelligence, right? There's a whole grouping of knowledge that goes into this transaction, okay? Uh, one other people, somebody said time, perfect. Time is up there, thank you. Oh, I like this one. Somebody said energy, energy, right? All right, that's a good, that's a good, that's a good stuff. So there's a lot that goes into this exchange, right? Already the cost of this exchange is costing me energy to pick up my phone, to walk over to this person, to raise my voice. It has cost me energy. It has allowed me to use my intellect or my knowledge or my brain to communicate to my mouth or to communicate to my organs, to communicate to my body to make this transaction. There's been time set set apart for this. Okay. Unless we're dealing with bots, which were already created and pre-programmed, which took time, energy, money, value, all that. We're still talking about the same thing because now we've invested time. This is seconds away from our life. Okay. So this exchange needs to be intentional. The next thing is that it costs you money. If time is money and money is time, it costs you time. Right. And then you've got money, of course, and then you've got value, which somebody shared. So there's value in this conversation. When I reach out to somebody who I loathe, there's value behind that. When I reach out to someone who I love, there's value behind that. Okay. Oh, good. These are really good. Um, I'm going to bring them up on the screen, you guys, because you're coming up with some good stuff. Uh, Taylor says time. Uh, Jason says relationships. Matt says physical, emotion and mental energy. Yeah, I'm going to take all of that, Matt, and I'm going to pour that into knowledge. Um, or no, no, no. Sorry, you described it. It's under energy. And then and then Carmen says quality. So I'm going to leave that up here for a second. But check this out, okay? So this exchange goes into there's, – there's a cost of each exchange. And then there's this. We call this in communication, this little path here, right? What do we call this in communication? This is called a channel, all right? And this is not like to go back to uh, uh, college where we talk about communication, right? And we communication factors, but this is essentially called a channel. And I like using the word channel because a channel is a place. It's a, it's an opportunity for us to communicate um, in, in, in a lot of movies and a lot of business or uh, sorry, movies or TV shows or Hollywood will control a, um, a channel of communication, right? If it's a ghost or a spirit talking to a human, there's like these waves of channels that they speak through, through lights, through anything. But humans luckily can use their mouths. They can use their body language. They can use any type of energy. There's so much that we produce in this channel. Okay. So this channel of energy is being spoken. And I'm just going to say that this person says, hi. Okay, so John says hello, and somebody's calling me. I feel like people see my face on their live streams, and they're like, oh, I should call John. 
and they call me. So I'm not going to say this person's name, <coughs> uh, but when they see like I'm live on Facebook, they call me and it's like, dude, I'm in the middle of this. So <laughs> here we go. I'm in the middle of this. Um, so I say, hi, I say, hello, it took time, right? It took energy. Now what happens on the recipient end? If we ignore this, has there been any, any loss of these resources, right? Okay. Have there been any losses of these resources if we ignore these? The answer is yes, because it doesn't matter if he lost it or he lost it. This was exposed, this was used, and this was this was contributed to the process, right? Uh, oh, Chip says, you need one of those mouse pens. It will give you more control. Yeah, I know. Um, I tried pulling up my – I need to pull up an iPad. I don't have an iPad. I just have my device, my phone, and, and StreamYard won't let me use uh, – well, let me use the phone to draw, um, but I'll figure it out. They're coming out with apps soon, so pretty cool stuff. Um, Chip says, hi, John. Maybe that came in from another place. Hey, Chip. <laughs> Love you, brother. <laughs> okay. Uh, Taylor says, opportunity costs and more. Okay, so this exchange is very, very valuable. So let's talk about this. The true value of connecting and networking. You invest time, you invest knowledge, you invest energy, you invest money, you invest value into your exchanges. So wouldn't you say that it's important to have intention behind every outreach? I've been caught just reaching out to people saying, hey, what's up, what's up, how's it going? You're awesome, la, 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 la. And that is important to me because I want people to feel of my energy, but at the same time, do we use that on just anybody? There's a question for you. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. I'm not going to answer that question. I just want to throw that out there. Is there the right type of investment in the right people? Now, if this person is Bill Gates, okay, Billy Bill, Bill the man, okay, if this guy is Bill Gates and he's worth Bill as in billions, oh wait, I should just, where's my eraser? All right, I haven't used this tool yet, so here we go. Uh, maybe I just go control. Oh, there we go. All right. So Bill as in billions. All right. His name's Bill. Did we all get that? Okay. But his name's billions. Okay. If this guy is billions, he's probably not going to say hi to John. Okay. He's not going to respond to John, which means this time and this energy is wasted unless strategically created. Okay. But there is value in what I provide. There is knowledge and there is energy that is it. But is if Matt, the billions of Matt, is, is not going to answer this, then there is a little bit of cost wasted. But, but what if, what if Bill responds? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take all this away. What if Matt here responds? And Matt says, okay, here we go. This is fun. Hello. <laughs> okay, this is super basic. I know we get this, but look, look, look. We're, we're, we're measuring this. So now all of a sudden this, right, this is now become this. We have energy, and I'm just going to briefly just K, uh, time, money, and value. Okay, there's a cost. Oops. There's a cost there too. So all of this combined means there's now an exchange. So if you started putting worth behind your exchanges, if you start putting a worth and a cost, a liability behind every single ex ex uh, uh, transaction you make in adjusting and creating conversation, now all of a sudden every word that I, that I claim, that you claim, that we have has value. Everything we say has value. When I lived in Washington, D.C., and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, minimize this just for a second. So when I lived in Washington, D.C., one of my favorite things about socializing and going out to like happy hours and meeting people was that people were so interested in intellectual dialogue. They wanted to share communication through a channel of 
of their thoughts and their opinions. And they were very, very open to religion. They were open to politics. They were open to subjects of uh, matter that they didn't understand. They were open to science. They were open to belief systems. They were open to energy. And I love that. And I love that because they were coming from a perspective of the value in which you uh, communicate is valuable to me and I bet I can reciprocate from a value of response and understanding. So there is value in any transaction we make verbally over the internet, through our body language and so forth. Now, this isn't to freak you out. This isn't to say, oh my gosh, you should be always aware of what's going on around you. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is you have value. Your words have value. Everything you produce, everything you provide has value. And because it does, you need to believe in that. <clears throat> I'm a handy water today. And if you believe that you have value, stop wasting time on wasteful conversations. Now, I love more than anybody to just kick back on Sundays and to talk sports nonsense and to throw out my theories and to chat about dumb things and to say funny things. You know, everything we do has a cost. Everything we provide has a value. There's energy. There's associations back behind what we provide. So now, now that you have an inkling or a taste of the value that you provide, the cost of the value that you provide is worth it when you direct it to the right people. So where am I getting with this? What is it talking about? It's, it's so important that you develop relationships with the intention in mind of developing a friendship or something deep enough that's going to lead you down a path of profitability, prosperity, and value. Does that make sense? Let me repeat it. Okay. Every transaction you make with connecting with people needs to have value. And actually, I forgot the process of what I just said, but I will tell you this. It must have profitability. It must have prosperity and it should lead to a transactional value. Now, transaction can be defined in any ways. I'm going to say at this point, I'm going to go back to my cute little drawing here. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. This is so good. This is so good. Okay. Going back to my drawing here, every transaction has a cost. Every transaction has a cost. So your, your transactions are valuable. And because it's valuable, direct it in a way that will lead to action. Does that make sense? Because when you when you just throw out conversations willy-nilly, when you just reach out to people and spam them, okay, and I've fallen guilty of this in all of my expert um, uh, experiences in business, okay? I've done what every other person has done. I have had mistake upon mistake in business, and I've recognized what works and what doesn't. But the cost of writing a spammy email, and they're not spammy, they're just, they're just, you know, updates and invitations and links to other campaigns and projects, right? But whatever it is, is that is the time and the transaction and the cost of that creation valuable enough? Is it valuable enough to you to send it out to your to your email lists? Is it valuable enough to to send stuff out? And I call this the shotgun effect. When I cock and load and pull the trigger on a shotgun, what does it spit out? Well, obviously, if you loaded it, if it, if you loaded it, it spits out pellets. Okay, and pellets are meant to expand and hit a wide range of topics, targets. And if you shoot a shotgun, though one of the best um, you know items for self defense, because you know you just close your eyes and pull, and you usually don't miss. Uh, on another context or another context of this, when you just pull the trigger and aim for the wall, I mean, you'll hit something, but it's not effective. Whereas if you were to usually in, intentionally reach out with your, with, 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 with your cost and value and then develop a relationship that builds profitability, prosperity, and value, 
It's a game changer. It's so much more different. It's so much more intentional. It's focused and it's developed. And these are the concepts. These are the things that we teach and talk about in our champion circle at Amplified Minds because we want you, we want you to develop a mentality, a mindset that every transaction verbally, over the internet, through email, through text, whatever it be, needs to be intentional that leads to profitability, prosperity, and value. I want to drop out of this for a second and go through some of these comments. Um, thank you for your comments. Everybody's been qual uh, providing cool things. Uh, Jason says value equals uh, relationships. Taylor said one of my favorite comments, which is opportunity costs. Yeah, that's exactly what we're talking about, the opportunity cost. Um, I, I saw his name on here. I'll bring it up in a minute. But there are opportunity costs behind everything. And when you know the value of your clients, when you know the value and the cost or the opportunity cost behind obtaining a lifelong friend, committed partner, and a in a world and a in a committed um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I'm gonna go with hmm, what's a good word um, other than committed, loyal. There you go, loyal customer right? Raving fans, all of that. I've used that before. Uh, then there's a cost to it. When you understand the cost of that, that's good. And I'm going to mention um, his name in a minute because I'm getting down to it. Chip says, you need one of the mount... Okay, we already talked about that. Uh, Matt says, hi. Hey, hello again. All right. Chip says, yes. Chip says, hi, John. Okay. Hey, I get it. Hi. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> yes. Have intention. Thanks, Matt. Um, no, Bill. LOL. Yeah, there we go. Bill. Bill. Bill is in billions. Okay. Chip says, so much is involved in receiving. If you lift it, it becomes great. If you downplay it, it's a loss. I, I love that. I love that. Take a snapshot of that. That's a really great quote. Matt says, billions equals Matt too. I love it. Yep, yep. You were the billions, my brother. Um, and I was going to use Chip too. Listening and eye contact on the five and uh, receive is – or and receive is powerful and respectful equals connection. I love that. That's a cool thought. And uh, yeah, there's so much more to all this. There's exponential levels of this crazy little drawing that I created. But the uh, as I point my mouse here, these things, okay, these things have costs and value, but they're exponentially grown in value when you treat them in a, in a, in a controlled environment, right? When you, when you are doing this via text message or messenger, right? Only so much can come of this until you pour in that value, but, but in a person-to-person -person communication or over the phone or in a Zoom chat or face-to-face, -face, right, FaceTime, there's so much more that is said that is unsaid through, you know, body language and so forth. So I, I think that's super valuable. So uh, great point. Here he is, Kyle Taylor in the house, meaningful, specific energy. I love that. And Kyle Taylor teaches you and, and helps you understand when you uh, attend one of his trainings where you um, sign up to be uh, one of his coaching clients or his, sorry, not coaching, consulting clients. He will train you and show you that there's a value cost, an opportunity cost in obtaining a client. And when you understand what your limit, what your, what your limit that you would go to, to obtain a client is, you now know the cost associated and the time investment that goes into obtaining people. Now, this is not a variation of his, of his training. This is just me teaching you guys that every exchange has a cost. Therefore, don't tread lightly in your communications. When you build relationships, remember, what does it go to? Prosperity, profitability, and value. Those are the things I want you to keep in mind. Kyle also says, given or, or received, it must be specific and meaningful on both sides. 150% true. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Kyle says, is if you use the shotgun approach, it means that you don't understand what your true messages are and that you don't understand self-market value. Powerful, dude. Powerful. Thanks for sharing that. And I love. I hope that you didn't mind the shout out. Um, this is a concept that I've learned from you, but it's a concept that I've learned from books to exchange to trial and error to everything else that that everything should be meaningful. I used to just, uh, okay, I'll tell you a story. This is kind of embarrassing, but I want to read two more comments first. He says, universal concept, you're crushing it, my dude. No, you're crushing it, my dude. And I can't, oh man, I'm so excited to be in business with you. 
I'm just so excited to be working with you. Um, Taylor, give me, I'm going to leave Taylor's comment up here. Woo! Okay. So what was I going to say? <laughs> I get so excited. This is exciting stuff. Let me tell you a story. When I was single and uh, when I was in college, I received an email saying that the alumni club at Utah Valley University was hosting was hosting a uh, speed dating night. Okay, they were going to provide food, they were going to provide music, entertainment, and then they were going to do two hours of speed dating. And I had never done speed dating before. I was single. I was like, dude, this is going to be awesome. I get to meet so many people. So I kind of like prepared for the night. I prepared for everything that I was going to be uh, uh, engaging in. And I started coming up with like these, these, uh, these like slogan lines that I was going to share with people like, so tell me about yourself. Cause I knew that was going to be the, the question that everyone was going to ask. Right. And I wanted to be different. I wanted to be different. So, um, I tested a theory. <laughs> I went by the name of John, but I pretended to be somebody else. And this was all in testing. I wasn't really trying to get dates out of this. I was just trying to understand human connection and I wanted to see how speed dating could work. So I created an alias. <laughs> I know this is so weird, and, and, and but this is just how my brain worked at the time, and maybe how it still works. Because everything to me is a test, everything is a challenge, and everything to me is like, well, how do we make this better? How do we how do we improve? But my mind works. How do I win? Right? When I wake up in the morning, everything I do, everything I say to myself is, how do I win? How do I win at this? Even if I'm the only one in competition, I say, how do I win? So. Uh, myself, I'm thinking this is speed dating. Not everyone's going to match with me. How do I win? So I created an alias. My name is John. And uh, if I remember even just any of the details, basically I told people that I was, <laughs> that I was, I was going to be a future astronaut because that was a childhood dream of mine. I wanted to go to space and blah, blah, blah. I wanted to f uh, fly like Tom Cruise and Top Gun. And I wanted to, I wanted to, you know, be in the, in the sky. I wanted to be a, a pilot. I want to do all that. So I said, I'm going to be an astronaut and that's what I'm training for. Right. So I'm John the astronaut. And uh, I thought that that was good enough. That was good enough to attract people. And I realized that everyone was different because I had my plug and play answer to the question. So tell me about yourself. And I would say, hi, my name is John. I'm in training to become an astronaut. So tell me about you. I would leave the hangar so cliffhanger tight that they would be like, whoa, tell me more. And I'd be like, no, 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 no. We'll jump into it. Let's match up. And uh, I swear if we go on a date, I can tell you all about it. And that was, that was, my, that was my line, right? Um, hey, my name is John and I'm training to be an astronaut. Tell me a little bit more about you. And that way we could focus on her more throughout the night. And uh, that was a very, very interesting tactic because the way the speed dating works is you got two minutes on one end and then they say switch and you go two minutes to the other person and then they say next partner and then you slide chairs. But I found a way to give them an to give them kind of a cliffhanger and, uh, uh, and to expect an opportunity outside of that transaction. So here's the right and the wrong behind it all. Um, because I knew that I wasn't going to match up with everybody. And because that my matches probably weren't true matches, I decided that in order to measure how many people pulled the trigger on, on John the astronaut, okay, I would like and try to match with every single girl that I had the opportunity to meet. So I said yes to everybody. And I had this transaction and I kept a record in my pocket of how many girls that I was able to meet with. I know this sounds really douchey, guys. I'm so sorry. It's not douchey. It's I wasn't doing anything dumb. I was just testing things, okay? And what I'm doing is I was trying to see how many times this same message would work on the same on different people. So that night I was I was uh, uh, I met 25 girls, okay? 25 girls in a two hour span. And uh, I said, hi, my name is John. I'm training to be an astronaut. But you know what? We'll talk about that later. If we go on a date, uh, we can talk more about that. Tell me more about you. And I gave them almost four minutes total to talk about themselves so I could just sit there and listen, right? And I write, I use this message on all of them. Okay, to wrap the story up, uh, out of the 25 girls that I paired up with, right, in that evening, um, 19 of them, 19 of them, said no. <laughs> 19 of them said no. I had six girls that I had officially aligned with 
out of the 25 that wanted to go on a date with me and wanted to talk more about the astronaut thing. Well, I'll tell you about that story later, but think about that. That percentage is so low compared to what I thought it would, right? I thought that I would have a convincing uh, profile, a convincing story, and a convincing message that I could use on 25 people. And those 25 people, only a few of them thought it was valuable and interesting. So was there lost time in transaction? Was there a cost of what I did? Yeah, I missed out on having 25 incredible conversations where I could meet and relate with people at a personal level. Only six people decided that that was valuable to them. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, I'll tell you another story another time of the time when I showed up to those dates and I wasn't John training to be an astronaut, that I was just a joke, right? But another time for another story. If you want to hear it, just shout out in the comment section. Tell the story, John. But let me tell you that it's the same exact thing. As I show you this dumb little, okay, it's not dumb. It's sweet. Look at this cool Awesome. Look at the cool, look at the, look at the angle here. This is amazing. This 2D reenactment of a conversation. There is cost and there is value in every transaction and everything you do. So my invite, my invitation, my invitation is make sure you intentionally build relationships with people, that you reach out to them with intention, care, and love, and that you want to do so with the impact expectation that you will build profitability prosperity and value. Those are my three things. Okay. Awesome. Jason says, Kyle is the man and has been instrumental to my business. Touche. Amen. Same thing. Curtis says, tell me about yourself. Tell me about yourself is the worst question. LOL. I know, I know, but that was like, that was like the way that they did it. Right. And I knew that that was coming, but because I had 25 conversations, that's what everyone was going to do because they only had two minutes to talk. So I was like, all right, that, that's going to be the number one conversation. But there were a few people who were like prepared, right? They're like, what's your favorite color? And I was like, hi, my name is John. I'm preparing to be an astronaut. Tell me about you. <laughs> so there you go. There's a good part of that story. Andrew Loveless Slip, he says, be like water, my friend. Bruce Lee, love it. Love it, love it, love it. And then Tara, Tara Marie Adams says, do you hold that mindset at all times? Um, be more specific because I've moved on to subjects. What are you talking about? Uh, which mindset? The story, Don't please don't take the story out of context. The story was um, young teenage, college age John who was trying to see how effective my message could be to build relationships with people. That was my that was my intention and my mindset. If you're asking about is do I hold that mindset at all times when I'm building relationships? You know, when I'm out golfing, I'm not building the mindset of um, of do I win this conversation? Do I win this game? Do I win all that? Golfing and social and recreation to me are 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 experience and um, friendship development places for me. Okay. I, I actually innately, if you look at my Gallup Strength Finders uh, top five, so shout out to Strength Finders, my top five, obviously woo. So I'm caring so much more about people and what they want and what they're thinking. I'm very, very uh, inquisitive to what people feel. Uh, my emotional intelligence is pretty high. Um, communication is my second. Positivity is my third. My fourth is uh, uh, inclusiveness. And then my fifth is action. Um, it's, it kind of snuck up there, which was interesting. But um, and, and not that I rely on those, but they are strengths and skills that I have. They're my strength finders. And because of that, I'm super inclusive. So when I recognize that what I'm saying or what I'm doing is not helpful to the other person, I abort that mission and I try something new or I do something different. So my mindset changes on a lot of stuff. But just know, uh, Tara, which is an awesome question, um, and she she – clarified and says in all settings. Cool. Um, thank you for that. She says, right. I mean the mindset of building value. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, I, I would just say that all I care about is that I can align and relate with someone. Let me, let me tell you this. Okay. When you meet somebody, it is likely that you do not have the same opinions. It is likely that you can't agree on all the same things and that your values may be different. And that's what makes the world a really cool and interesting and great place, right? Our value, our value is how we perceive others' thoughts, opinions, and actions. 
and how we treat them based on those and how accepting and tolerable or tolerant we are of those differences. Okay. I, I lived in the Philippines for a few years and while I was in the Philippines, my skin was white. My eyes were blue. My nose was bigger and sharper and longer than anyone there in the entire nation. And my hair was black, which was ironically, uh, uh, obscure for, for foreigners and for traveling. Um, pe most people think of Americans or white people as blonde, tall, blue eyed in you know, the Aryan race type stuff. Okay. And um, because of that, I always, I always was at a disposition. People were attracted to talk to me or to converse with me or look at me or stare or say weird things. Right. But I was always at an awkward disposition where I had to fight my way back to building value. And so if you're ever thrown into a foreign country or a foreign position, you're always going to be stuck in this, I've got to accept people for who they are and where they're at, but also learn to level them. I may not agree with you, Tara, or, or Chip, or Matt, or Taylor, or Kyle. I may not agree with you on everything, but you know what I can do is that I can love and appreciate that you are passionate or that you enjoy or that that's your opinion. I can appreciate that that's your opinion. And all day long, I can say that. I can say, well, I disagree with you on how you feel about the mindset and building value. And I'll say, you know what? I really appreciate you. I appreciate for who you are and I appreciate that that's your opinion because it's obviously different and that's what makes us unique. You know, that's what builds us together. And so that's where this philosophy, right? The idea of the exchange of the transaction, there's a cost of everything. That's where this becomes important because whether you agree or disagree with somebody, whether you love them or hate them, right? Whether you love them or loathe them is what I like to say. Uh, this transaction, there's always a cost. Now that mindset, that mindset is all about creating intention and outreach. So I hope that, I hope that makes sense. And I hope that answers your question. I love your comments. I guess I'm trying to figure out if that's something that can be maintained consistently with practice. Oh, okay. Um, the truth of it is yes and no. Like I said, my mindset in recreation is far different than my mindset in building relationships. When I go to a networking meeting, here's the thing, you guys. I, I made this uh, I made this paradigm understanding just the other day. And I love your comments and I love your questions, Tara. These are awesome. And they're leading into some even deeper conversations. So you're awesome. You're killing it. Um, I made this, uh, this paradigm switch in my brain the other day that on my calendar, I have blocked out time to invest in these kinds of conversations. I've blocked out time to make phone calls and on my calendar, I have labeled them as sales calls. Okay. Because that's my time that I allotted for sales. Right. And yes, I'm picking up the phone. Yes. I'm sending messages. Yes. I'm involving myself in a sales conversation and a sales co um, conversion process. But what I realized is how much more tentative and uh, fearful and how much more resentful I was of that time when I was going into it thinking, okay, this is sales time. I got to get sales, right? Versus I realized that I need to stop calling it that. I need to stop telling myself, okay, this is my sales hour. I must make sales. And instead, I, sh I shifted that time over to investment time. I'm investing in people. I'm investing in them. I'm investing in that transaction. I'm investing in our relationship. I'm investing in a lot of things. And when I made that mindset, all of a sudden, my fear of sales went away. Okay, there's still some stuff that I'm like, uh, you know, do I say the right thing now? Do I ask for money now? Do I take the, you know, all that stuff was still there. But, but my fear of picking up the phone went away because it was no longer, I need to jump on a sales call and anyone who's picking up the phone is going to know that this is sales hour and John's going to sell them, right? My mindset shifted from these are sales calls to these are investment calls. And anytime you pick up the phone for an investment call, you're going to ask questions. You're going to learn as much as you can. You're going to listen. You're going to share your thoughts, your reservations. You're going to get into the things, the, 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 the thick, the weeds of what you really, really want to talk, talk about and converse with people about. So I love this question because yes, you can practice this. 
Yes, you can develop it into daily practice and it becomes innate and natural when you do this. But just remember, the most important thing is you are special. Let's go back to my freaking awesome drawing. <laughs> Look at this. Okay, this drawing is amazing. Why? Because everything has a cost. And what is cost? A form of value. And because cost is a form of value, you, Tara, you, Taylor, you, Matt, you, Kyle, you, Jason, you, Marcella. Did I say that right? Did I say her name right? Chip. Where is it? Did I say? Oh, Carmen. There we go. Carmen, you guys, you, you have value. And so don't waste your value on pointless conversation. Improve your value by exchanging the cost associated with that value to other people with intention of building profitability, prosperity, and value. Does that make sense? So, so my encouragement is more of a motivational message today in that make sure you reach out with intention. Make sure that you know your value. This is really what it's all about. Tara also says, I love it when people have different views than I do. Much more interesting. I, I agree. And it's more interesting to hear what they have to say. She also says, yes, it does make sense. Awesome. I'm glad. And thank you. I'm really glad we went on that tangent. And I'm really glad you asked that question. Because had you not asked that, we would have not gotten into the weeds of what it looks like to develop that mindset. Yes, you can practice this on a daily basis. How uh, I teach courses on this. Um, I also have a, a connecting group called the Champion Circle, which is what I'm the founder of. Champion Circle is a enhancement from any networking event or mastermind you've ever been to. It includes the mastermind blueprint, but it also includes the value of connection and the education. So if you have any interest in learning more about the Champion Circle, please send me a direct message right now, and I will share with you information about the Champion Circle uh, starting up in areas near you very, very soon. She says, I love the shift that one word can make, investment instead of sales. Thank you for reiterating that point. Um, because it was, it was that, it was that particular principle for me, the shift from sales, sales, sales to investment. And I could have even said care. Um, in the in the event planning world, people say it's not butts and seats, because that that that's that puts pressure, right? That puts pressure. Uh, <laughs> Okay, that was not a pun. That was not a gravity joke. It does. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I just lost it. All right. In the event planning world, <laughs> sorry, I'm holding back a laugh. <laughs> okay, and I'm immature to you guys. I'm so sorry. In the event planning world, the phrase "put butts in seats" is a sales the sales terminology, right? It's get people there. Numbers, numbers, numbers. People, people, people. Right. But a lot of people have changed it and they've changed it. And they say, put hearts in seats or put hearts in the room, right? And when they do that, it's now no longer a concept of, all right, get sales, get sales, bring the masses in, let's do this. It's caring individually and intentionally for every person you invite. Because it's tr it, the truth is, is I don't want to bring uh, a hobo Joe into my events, because Hobo Joe might come in and disrupt the experience for everyone else by asking my event, uh, the, the, the event attendees who either paid to be there or have sacrificed to be there. He's, he's probably going to, uh, and this is no offense to the homeless community or anything. I'm just using it as an, as, an, as an example. But if Hobo Joe goes around my event and asks people for money, that's going to make a bad experience for my people, right? So – there's kind of an example of that, but I love that. Uh, the shift of one word that can make investment instead of sales. She says, LOL. Is it virtual or is it coming? Great question, Chip. Let's address that. Let's address that. So I have been fighting the, the virtual play because Champion Circle was designed to help individuals and professionals win. And the way that it was designed was to have an in-person experience. So I had been waiting on the clock and adjusting and promoting and getting people excited. Now, here's the deal. I just read an article 
and I spoke to several health professionals, and I understand a little bit more uh, in depth about what's to come from COVID-19. First wave is kind of coming to a drizzly end. The second wave is worth more than an aftershock, you guys. Um, this could get worse. This could get bad. And because of that, I have to adjust. I have to be agile, right? And so right now, I am building a virtual concept for this. And because of that, we will be launching very, very soon. The truth is, is just like your Connect Share, your BNI, your connecting groups, Champion Circle will be available to you anywhere at any time because of your membership. And the education platforms will be created. And leadership boards will be available so that you can get involved in your local communities. I will be traveling state to state, city to city, coast to coast to oversee and help and train and develop these groups. But in the meantime, we can do it virtually too. So the big announcement right now is, is it virtual or is it coming? It's in person, it will be virtual, and it is coming. Um, I have set a tentative date, and I will not announce that today. That will be a Friday thing I'll be announcing. But stay tuned, and I'll be reaching out to you. Uh, Chip, um, Jason is a leader of our Utah group and our Salt Lake group, and uh, I'll be getting more information over to him and about that as well. And um, it's likely that we could help you open up a group that would leverage you and your expertise out there in, in Arizona. So there you go. There's some information. Thanks for asking that question. I really appreciate it. He says it's hard from AZ. It won't be when I bring it to you, to AZ. So there you go. And plus, if you're the man at the front of the room, it's even more valuable. So I just want to thank everybody for participating today. This was really fun. This was really fun. You know why? Because I got to show you the masterful piece of this awesome drawing, okay? And I'm going to make these smiles just bigger, okay? And I'm going to say – uh, the, oh, maybe I'm going to ruin it, right? There's a big star here. There's a big star here. Woohoo! Okay. Now we're starfish. Don't you love that? I'm so good at drawing. So at the end of the day, just remember there's a cost for everything you do. The time I spent on this, this live hour, oh, my phone's going off again. That's going to kick me out. Hopefully everyone can see me. Hey everybody, I'm back. There's a cost to everything. There was a cost for me to do this live hour. There's been a cost for me to invest in nine weeks straight of going um, live at noon every day. There's a cost to that. And I recognize that. And I know that I need to better evaluate my systems and my processes. Today I invited you. If you want to learn more about Champion Circle, send me a direct message. If you would like to learn more about anything I do or anything that we're talking about, send me a direct message. Okay? And uh, um, to make it stupid simple for us okay to make it stupid simple and i'm looking at my screen from another device and it's super blurry so i apologize if you're seeing the blurry me i'm trying to figure that out a little bit but there you go so i will be posting in the comment section uh, a quick way to reach me and that's an awesome way but please send me a personal message if you have any questions or would like to connect so this has been an awesome, fun hour. Thank you for joining me. By the way, um, a new, a few other invitations coming out soon. I'll be launching those tomorrow. Is that there will be opportunities to be featured on the Circle of uh, Circle of Knowledge podcast which is a podcast that Amplified Minds produced that has over 20,000 downloads uh, from listeners. And so that's pretty exciting. And uh, we also have other opportunities to be featured in our areas. Uh, we have a couple other clients who are working with us. If you would like to learn how to be leveraged and elevated as an authority in your space, in your area, that's the bit nature of our business. So again, you're going to want to reach out to me if you want to learn how to come up with creative ways to immediately leverage you as an authority figure in your space and in your community. That's what we do. And the Champion Circle was designed to help you connect with strategic relationships that will actually get you paid and turn those relationships into lifelong friendships that will learn and teach you how to build profitability, prosperity, and value in your life. So there you guys go. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you, Chip. Thank you, Tara, for everything that you guys do. And I appreciate you. Um, we ran out of time. I haven't bringing anyone up on the show today, but stay tuned for tomorrow at noon. We'll be talking about similar topics, but mostly that we'll be covering the topics of communication. Reach out to Taylor Douglas if you'd like to get involved in our 100 Conversations Challenge. This is her 100 Conversations Challenge that I'm going through today and uh, very, very, very exciting. 
Appreciate you all. Love you all. Take care and have a blessed day.